For years, the EV industry has been chasing the elusive perfect battery, one that's safe, cheap, long-lasting, and capable of delivering serious range. We've seen promises of 1,000-mile solid-state batteries and flashy breakthroughs in lithium metal cells. Yet, every time a new chemistry looks promising, real-world obstacles like cost, manufacturability, and safety pull us back to reality. But now, an unexpected contender is entering the race, plastic batteries. Built on conductive polymers instead of rare metals, these batteries don't just resist fire they don't ignite at all. With over 12,000 full-depth charge cycles, they offer 10 times the life of Tesla's 4680 cells, and they're made from abundant, low-cost materials. While their current energy density may not break records, the next-gen polymer packs are aiming for over 150 watt-hour per kilogram, enough to power urban EVs, fleet buffers, and charging infrastructure. The big question now isn't if plastic batteries will matter, but how fast they'll scale. Welcome to Tesla car world. How can plastic batteries be used in EVs? The excitement swirling around polymer-based plastic batteries has sparked a blunt question. Can these cells, with their alluring longevity and blistering power delivery, truly serve as the traction batteries in electric cars? Or are they destined to remain niche workhorses for stationary storage? At first blush, the answer seems cruelly simple. With a present-day gravimetric energy density of roughly 60 watt-hours per kilogram, barely a quarter of the figure delivered by Tesla's cylindrical 4680 cells, and a fraction of the 500-plus watt-hours per kilogram promised by cattle experimental lithium metal chemistry, an all-polymer pack large enough to propel a midsize cross over 300 miles would weigh more than a metric ton and swallow precious cabin volume. Add the chemistry's relatively high self-discharge rate, several times that of modern lithium-ion cells. And the case looks even shakier. Because an electric vehicle that loses a meaningful slice of its stored charge while merely sitting in long-term parking quickly becomes a customer service nightmare. That said, dismissing polymer outright ignores two crucial paths that could still shepherd the technology into the automotive mainstream. First, the chemistry's architects argue that a second-generation cell already moving through the prototype stage, unofficially dubbed the energy reservoir, is targeting a trebling of energy density. Even if that goal were only half realized, a cell in the 150 to 180 watt-hours per kilogram bracket would suddenly match or surpass the latest iron phosphate packs used in entry-level variants of the Model 3 and BYD Dolphin. At that point, the weight penalty would shift from crippling to merely inconvenient, an acceptable compromise for fleet operators obsessed with cycle life. Second, polymer electrodes excel at raw power delivery and thermal stability, surviving 12,000 full-depth cycles with minimal capacity fade while shrugging off the flammability concerns that dog lithium-ion. Those traits make them ideal candidates for hybrid battery architectures in which a smaller polymer module absorbs brutal, regenerative braking surges and launch acceleration, sparing a lighter, higher-energy lithium pack from peak stress and thereby fending off premature aging. In fact, the quickest route to a real-world answer may be exactly what skeptical engineers in Outline 1 proposed. Build 100 pilot packs, drop them into fleet vehicles that rack up 70-plus kilowatt-hours of daily duty, and watch the data flow. Rapid trials in taxis, shuttle buses, and last-mile vans operating across deserts, humid tropics, and alpine winters would expose whether self-discharge, thermal drift, or mechanical fatigue emerges as the true Achilles heel. If the program confirms that range degradation and idle losses remain unacceptable, the industry can pivot with minimal sunk cost and redirect polymer production capacity toward utility-scale storage a sector ravenous for batteries that tolerate enormous power pulses without catching fire or begging for active cooling. Conversely, if the pilot reveals that intelligent thermal management and smart firmware can corral self-discharge while a next-gen cell pushes density past the 100 WH per kilogram mark, automakers gain a compelling second source that is dramatically safer, built from abundant hydrocarbons rather than conflict minerals 
and practically immortal on a calendar basis. Even a city-focused runabout needing only 100 miles of real-world range could benefit, because the driver would cycle the pack shallowly, likely adding decades to its service life. There are, of course, broader grid ramifications. A chemistry that charges or discharges at megawatt levels could become the on-site buffer that shields urban superchargers from catastrophic peak loads, soaking up cheap overnight power and dumping it into cars during the evening rush. The same attribute dovetails with renewable heavy microgrids, where steep solar drop-offs at dusk provoke reliability headaches. Polymer banks could inject gigawatts for 10 or 20 minutes, buying time for slower resources to ramp. None of those stationary opportunities vanishes if the cells eventually migrate into vehicles. If anything, a healthy stationary market would bankroll the scale-up that drives costs toward the $20 per kilowatt hour holy grail analysts dream about. Critics counter that comparing potential to proven hardware is risky optimism, and they are right. Until polymer packs break the 150 watt hour per kilogram barrier and slash idle losses by at least two thirds, no credible automaker will stake a mass market launch on them. Yet history reminds us that lithium ion itself was once dismissed as too volatile, too costly, and unable to survive the vibrations of a road car a notion overturned first by consumer electronics volume and then by Tesla's audacious bet on cylindrical cells. Even modest success with polymer could mirror that trajectory. An initially underwhelming chemistry finds its first killer app, gains economies of scale, undergoes relentless iteration, and ultimately becomes viable in segments that early spreadsheets labeled impossible. For now, the sober verdict is that polymer batteries are not ready to shoulder the entire energy burden of a long-range EV, but they are tantalizingly close to transforming two critical slices of the mobility puzzle. Extreme power buffering inside a hybrid pack and ultra-safe, ultra-durable stationary storage that underpins the charging infrastructure those cars depend on. The prudent course is to accelerate pilot manufacture, seed the cells into a hundred vehicles, collect multi-climate field data, and let facts rather than hype dictate whether polymer's future lies beneath a car's skateboard chassis or bolted to the wall of a substation. Either outcome addresses genuine market pain points. Either outcome nudges the world closer to decarbonization without inviting the thermal runaway nightmares that lithium skeptics fear. That pragmatic test and verify approach is the only way to answer the deceptively simple question. Can plastic batteries drive an electric car? with confidence rather than conjecture, and it is the roadmap the battery community must follow before any sweeping pronouncements about a 300-mile polymer EV can carry real engineering weight. How could a 100-year lifespan exist in the real world outside of a lab? Talk of a battery that could last a full century immediately triggers a healthy skepticism, because laboratory life testing, however rigorous, rarely mirrors the entropy, vibration, thermal swings, and user abuse that a cell faces in day-to-day -day service. Polyjoule's polymer chemistry, for example, survives roughly 12,000 full-depth cycles at room temperature, which spreadsheet math converts into a headline-grabbing 100-year life on the assumption of one complete discharge every three days. Yet the real world almost never obliges such tidy cadence. A delivery van might cycle twice daily in August heat, a stationary pack might float at partial charge for weeks, and a commuter car could sit curbside through winter nights that chill electrolytes and slow lithium-ion diffusion. Each deviation from the lab protocol nudges degradation curves in unpredictable directions, calendar aging from trace moisture, mechanical fatigue from pothole shocks, catalytic side reactions at high state of charge, so the safe translation is that a pack advertised at a century will probably surrender usable capacity long before 2012-25 if it has worked hard in a vehicle. Still, even a 50-year floor would dwarf the longevity of contemporary lithium-ion systems, and that provides a clue to the proper niche for such chemistry. Low-maintenance grid storage, remote microgrids, and uncrewed industrial sites where swapping batteries every decade is logistically painful. The automotive frontier, by contrast, now fixates on a different moonshot, 
lithium metal cells exceeding 500 watt-hours per kilogram. By stripping away the heavy graphite anode and replacing it with a whisper-thin sheet of pure lithium, companies like cattle claim to triple the energy density of standard iron phosphate cells, so a 70-kilowatt-hour pack that once weighed 500 kilograms might fall below 200, instantly boosting efficiency, razor-blading curb weight, and opening design headroom for smaller motors or larger passenger cabins. Combined with ever-thinner structural battery casings and gigawatt-rate fast charging stations, such density creates a playground in which a sleek sedan can traverse a thousand miles on a single stop, then top back up in scarcely more time than a latte order. Tesla's relationship with cattle positions it as the most likely early adopter, and if the Fremont and Shanghai lines begin cranking lithium metal packs before the decade turns, legacy automakers will be thrust into the unpleasant posture of explaining to customers why their premium flagship manages only 400 miles. Beyond range bragging rights, lithium metal offers a cost game changer. Because each kilowatt hour demands less total cell mass, the bill of materials per mile driven plummets even if the raw lithium price rises. Fast charge tolerance also elevates fleet utilization. A ride-hailing vehicle that currently loses 40 minutes on a public charger could shave that downtime to 10. Squeezing more revenue rides from the same capital asset and nudging total cost of ownership below the best diesel sedans. The one bugbear is cycle life. Early prototypes peter out after 500 full cycles, Respectable for a luxury cruiser, but unworkable for high-mileage taxis or grid-to-vehicle arbitrage markets. Cattle's answer is a blitz of AI-assisted electrolyte discovery, mapping solvent degradation pathways and surfactant additives to suppress dendrites and seal the solid electrolyte interface. If that effort doubles endurance twice, an engineering feat but hardly a miracle, lithium metal vaults into the 2000 cycle tier. Enough for two decades of suburban commuting or eight years of ride-sharing punishment. Put bluntly, should cattle clear that durability hurdle, the step change is so vast that calling it an upgrade undersells the impact. It would be a new phase line in the technological timeline, akin to the leap from flip phones to smartphones. Taken together, the Century Life polymer cell and the thousand-mile lithium metal racer sketch, complementary futures, rather than competing ones. Polymer excels where longevity and fire safety outweigh mass. Lithium metal rules where every kilogram saved multiplies performance and range. The industry's task is not to crown a single winner, but to weave both chemistries into the right layers of the energy ecosystem, ensuring that when today's college freshmen retire, they look back not at a battery revolution that fizzled, but at one that matured diversified and delivered exactly the right electron reservoir for every job. How can five-minute EV charging work without crashing the power grid? Cattle Naxtra sodium ion battery has shaken up the industry with its ability to add 300 miles of range in just five minutes, powered by cells rated at 175 watt-hour per kilogram and capable of taking in over one megawatt of charge. It's an impressive leap, but it comes with immense strain on the power grid. Just one million cars charging simultaneously would spike demand to one terawatt, nearly the entire U.S. utility-scale generation capacity. Now imagine a different solution, less about racing electrons into the battery and more about durability, stability, and system design. Enter plastic batteries. With a current energy density of approximately 60 watt-hour per kilogram, and next-gen targets around 150 to 180 watt-hour per kilogram. These polymer-based cells may not yet match sodium ion in speed, but they shine elsewhere. Plastic batteries can survive 12,000 deep cycles, shrug off thermal runaway entirely, and require little to no active cooling. In the context of ultra-fast charging, they offer a different kind of solution. Instead of going inside the EV itself, they can form the station buffer layer, charging slowly from the grid, then discharging rapidly to support five-minute vehicle sessions, just like sodium ion buffer packs today. Let's do the math. A 3-megawatt-hour plastic battery, even at lower energy density, 
could still deliver 15 megawatt bursts to multiple EVs simultaneously, as long as its discharge architecture supports high power output, which conductive polymer electrodes can enable. Unlike lithium ion or sodium ion, these batteries pose 0% fire risk and can operate in unattended high heat environments like highway charging depots or grid substations. And what about in the cars themselves? Today, plastic batteries can't support a full 300 mile range without significant mass. But for urban EVs, delivery fleets, or rideshare cars doing less than 100 miles per day, plastic batteries with 150 watt hour per kilogram could become a compelling standalone solution. Combined with five minute top up support at fleet depots, the use case flips. It's not about one battery doing everything. It's about a hybrid ecosystem where plastic batteries optimize cycle life and grid safety, while high-density chemistries like sodium ion chase peak range. Plastic batteries could also redefine V to G strategies. With their decade-plus calendar life and zero volatility, they're ideal for being cycled thousands of times in bidirectional energy systems, where cars act as virtual power plants. Sure, today's plastic battery can't directly absorb 1.3 megawatt in five minutes like Nextra, but in five years? With next-gen energy reservoir prototypes, smarter thermal management, and hybrid pack architectures, five-minute energy delivery from a plastic battery-powered buffer system is not only plausible, it might become the safest way to make fast charging truly scalable. How will plastic batteries replace lithium in the next five years? With cycle life exceeding 12,000 full-depth discharges, near-zero fire risk, and the complete elimination of lithium, cobalt, and nickel, these so-called plastic batteries may offer not just a safer alternative, but a more sustainable one, especially if paired with smart charging and power management systems. But the vision of fast, clean, low-maintenance energy isn't just about battery chemistry. It hinges on how these batteries are deployed. While current polymer cells hover around 60 watt-hour per kilogram, second-generation prototypes, unofficially dubbed energy reservoir cells, are targeting 150 to 180 watt-hour per kilogram. That's enough to rival entry-level lithium iron phosphate LFP packs already used in mainstream EVs. Though plastic batteries are not yet suited to power entire long-range EVs, they are ideally suited for high-power short-duration roles. Imagine a hybrid battery system. A compact polymer module absorbs aggressive regenerative braking surges and launch acceleration, sparing the main lithium pack from stress-induced aging. In this role, polymer batteries act as shock absorbers for energy, extending the lifespan of high-energy cells. If a plastic battery lasts 10 times longer but weighs more, would you still choose it for your EV? Why or why not? Please share your opinion in the comments section below this video. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla Bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to Tesla Car World and turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.